So you can't start till she shows up? No, we can start. start. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna call the Calus Select Board to order at 7.03. All right. Now, are we going to go in executive session? That was the question that Bruce kind of posed on his email. The process that we could do it, um, but I don't know if we want to. Well, what you, what's um, your advice? What's your advice? Do you want to, Denise? We've been we've been talking about the contract um, the Callus board has in executive session because it's allowed under the um, open meeting law. Yep. And John, Rick, what are your thoughts? I'm good either way. I don't mind being on the record or or being you know right now. I'm good with it uh, going in. Yeah, it's, it's I am too. I'm I'm good with not going in executive session. But what do you think, Bruce? Is Bruce a board member? No. Can I oh. can I comment? Um, yes. The purpose of going into executive session, it's not required, it's permissive. And it's for purposes of a contract negotiation or discussion, it's so as not to prejudice one of the parties. And yep. we're two of the parties. So we're talking amongst ourselves. So we're disclosing to each other, you know, what our position is. So that it's being made public wouldn't disadvantage us because we're, we're telling each other our thoughts. So I don't see a need for it. Um, that's my, um, and it, it might be hard to re reach the uh, threshold determination or finding that um, premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. That's what we'd need to find to go into executive session. John, do you have a thoughts on this? Well, there are three parties to this contract. There's Callis, East Montpelier, and um, East Montpelier Callis Fire Department. So I, I don't know. I, I, I could go either way. I, I would disagree a little bit with Judith um, in that I think that, uh, you, there may be a strategy uh, toward, for instance, gaining agreement that we don't want the third party to know, right? Um, I mean, I, and we just got through two, two years, almost a year and a half worth of union negotiations and we had confidential discussions with ourselves and our advisor and our attorneys and it was for strategic reasons and there may be a strategic reason there may not be we're just asking for some pretty simple language changes i don't see anything of any great consequence so i'd go either way but uh i i think we're better off to be open with personally but yeah that's just my personal way of dealing with this type of issue is openness it's mm -hmm. just because i don't see that we'd be gaining a lower gaining an upper hand or a strategic disadvantage or advantage by going into executive session. And I almost think it kind of looks bad, but I could go either way, but I, I'm not seeing that we need to. Uh, I, uh, so I don't, I guess I don't, um, I put it on there as potential mm -hmm. so that we would, so we all right. know we have the option. Um, yep. And like I, as John mentioned, I think what we're asking change is pretty straightforward pretty simple yeah well, i agree but i agree with seth i mean i'm completely good with doing it right out in the open i don't i don't think there's any advantage or disadvantage gain this is just about discussing all right what so we're um, i think the perception of going in executive session may may be not the best whereas mm -hmm. in the open openness the perception could be slightly better. So that's my thought on it. Okay. Cliff, um, you, Cliff, are you in agreement? You're on mute. We're talking about executive session? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know that we need to, but if the agreement is that we should, then I'm okay with that, but I don't know that we need to. Right. We're kind of leaning towards not. Yeah. So, yeah. 
All right, so let's make the decision not to go into executive session. Yep. Okay. Um, you got our letter. Yep. And had a chance, I assume, to all of you to read it. I don't know um, if anybody on East Mount player side wants to call the letter up on the shared screen or not. I've got the letter in front of me. Well, I got a hard copy, so that's right. a little bit different. So. So what are your thoughts, East Montpelier? So, so what you're saying is you want to vote it on the floor? We want the two towns. We want, what, it, what it says is that we would, each town would have the choice of either putting it in your select board budget right. or having it voted on from the floor. I think there's, I think something is lost if we're talking about open communication and all those good things. I think there's something lost in not having a discussion at town meeting regarding the fire department budgets. Cause we do Woodbury too. And they're fine with us doing it on a, you know, doing it on the warning in an open meeting in a town meeting. John? John? Is that the so same just as, a point of you? Sorry. as a point of clarification, um, it, it's on the floor anyway in town meeting. It's just right. buried in our respective select board budgets. There could be a motion made at town meeting to separate it from the budget and have a separate uh, line item discussion. Um, although I don't think the way the contract reads whether it would be appropriate if the select board, you know, advocated for that. Let's say um, it is I think it's better. These are large budget items. We have separately warned articles for all large budget items. And this is one. And I think it allows for a greater discussion. And actually, I think it, it works in favor for the, of the fire department yeah. uh, because then they can present their argument for why th these are necessary. And it keeps our public up to speed with where all this money's going to. Otherwise, if it just gets slipped through one day, it's gonna culminate in somebody saying, where's all this money been going? Uh, so and anyway, also, so it gives us the option. And, uh, you know, we could do it. If East Montpelier doesn't want to do that, they could have theirs buried in the budget, continue that to do that. Like Denise said, Woodbury has never asked for this. And what has resulted is they attend every year's town meeting and they give a brief presentation as to what services they provide us and where all the money is going. And they usually get a round of applause. So I've never heard anyone debate it. It's not like the library item, which is all separately warned, by the way. And, and I think also a lot of people don't know that they could call out a separate line item within the within the budget. And I do, right. I think I think I think it leads to greater transparency for the fire department. It gives them a chance to say, you know, anybody want to be a volunteer? This is what we spend the money on. So that everybody has a better understanding and appreciation for what the fire departments do. Yeah, I would, I would <laughs> completely agree. This is, uh, you know, I actually think this builds support. You know, we want to engage the people and you always get a few naysayers who are going to question budget items, but this is a great service to the community. The community supports it. And the act of actually putting it out there and having them physically vote on it that solidifies that support because I do, especially in this day and age with everything that's gone to kind of undermine public vote, this works against us if not having that there, you know, because it does look like a, it's, it, 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 it's just got, doesn't pass the sniff test. It looks like we're forcing something on people. That's the way some people will interpret it and that's the way they will present it. So yeah. I think that, you know, I personally think it'd be foolish not to do this. You know, I, I'm not concerned about really passing it. I think, I also think, you know, it brings, it will bring up good questions from people in debate on it. And then that makes us stand up and justify it, which is generally pretty easy to do. So uh, that's, that's, could, that's could our three. Could I ask a clarifying question just because I want to make sure I'm looking at the right, comparing the right documents. Um, 
as it exists now, paragraph six contains the language you're proposing. What you're proposing is deleting the first two sentences of paragraph six. Is that correct? I have to go back. You mean, you mean the, it, the current contract, is. you mean? Yes. The current contract, um, it says East Mount Pillar and Callis shall include in each of their respective budgets the amount of EMFD's operating budget attributable to, to their respective towns. What we're suggesting, the manner of but presentation no, of any capital request will be at the discretion of the individual select boards. So what we're suggesting is that the manner of presentation of the operating budget, also operating budget or any capital request shall be at the discretion of each individual select board. Because so, right so now, Judith's says, question was right, though. You said, Judith, that you're going to eliminate the first two sentences, and that's correct. Yeah, I did. Judith is right. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so we just we just kind of mushed sentences to together and made it short and simple. Yeah, or, in a, or is, there, um, is there another place within the document? And I apologize, I didn't scan it um, as thoroughly as I might have. Um, for today's meeting. Is there another place within the document where the towns commit to paying the um, um, this amount that they're otherwise committing to? I mean, is there another commitment or representation that they'll be committing the necessary funds or that's not happening anywhere else in the document? In, in, I think in our read, Judith, of this contract, um, it was number six that talked about how the, um, you know, how we would go about getting them the money that they requested. Yeah, I mean, in essence, though, Judith, we've we answer to the people to the you know to the people in the vote. So ultimately, do we have, you know, the idea? I mean, to, we can't guarantee budgets. I don't think we can even guarantee a line item. You know, because it can be overridden by the town, correct? I'm new to the select board, but I believe that's the case. So the idea is to put it in a, in a position where we're probably going to really, you know, put this out to them and engage them in the vote. It's a, like I said, it's a great service. You know, and I think this, you were far less likely to see any kind of resistance, you know, by going this route. I mean, I did, I would think that the townspeople can still go in and into our, you know, direct this, you know, the select board to, you know, pull money from a line item that they've de dedicated out of our budget. Denise and John, am yeah. I correct in that? I mean, that's yeah, I mean, that's and that's what we started out in the beginning was talking about that. Right now, the budget amounts are in the select board budget at town meeting. Anybody could request that a, any particular line item, whether it's a truck or whatever, be pulled out and changed. And as we talked about in, you know, in being transparent and um, putting things out there for the public to talk about, I think it's a really good opportunity um, for the fire departments, and I'm talking about both, Woodbury and um, East Montpelier Callis, that this is a great opportunity for the fire departments to tell folks about the important work that they do. Okay. And they always get a, a round of applause and thank yous. And it also gives them an opportunity to maybe engage some people into looking to serve on the fire department as a volunteer. So I think, I think that not having that discussion <clears throat> hasn't helped. I think it was helpful when the fire departments came to town meeting and talked with folks and explain. So I just got a quick question. The way it works in East Montpelier is if you did follow this system of pulling the fire department ambulance service out of our select board budget, we would talk about it at town meeting, but we would still have to vote on it by Australian ballot. Right, but you, you, guys, you guys could continue to do it has you're currently doing it. This is this option is this idea is to give the two towns the option of how they want to no, do it. No, I, I understand that, but okay. 
the way it works in Calso is you can vote on this on the floor. Is correct. that correct? Correct. Right. Whereas we're tied, anything over $25,000 goes to Australian ballot, but we could discuss oh, right. it on the floor. But we would still vote on it by Australian ballot if we chose. We could separate it out as Kellogg Hubbard Library separate out, separate out also. Right. We could separate it out and discuss it on the floor, and we would still vote on it by Australian ballot. But you could dis you would discuss it and vote on it on the floor. Correct. Okay. Correct. I mean, I'm just saying that our system is slightly different in that it's too big an item to vote on the floor. Yeah. Uh, I think. But there's been uh, discussion among various people that they would want to see the fire department uh, budget separated from our budget, the select board budget, and discussed on the floor. People have talked about that. So oh, in, in East Montpelier, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of you know that's some of what we've heard too, because you know it is right. a lot. It is a lot of money. Right. And I think it's a good opportunity for the fire departments to say, hey, this is why. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, so it's people like, understand. It's right. also a you know it's it's one of these things. The equipment's expensive. The training's expensive. The rules around it are expensive. So yeah. it's it's a rising expense. And the best way to get people keep them behind it is to really engage them in it. And so so the big argument against it is that, and I'm not saying I advocate this argument, but this has been made numerous times, that if it did not pass in Callis, and it did pass in East Montpelier, it puts us in kind of a bind, you know, that's the problem, is that if it didn't pass in one town, it did pass in the other, then you're gonna have to have something, what would happen? That's but it could but it could happen that way anyways, if somebody asked to have that line item <clears throat> pulled out yes. at town meeting. So that, I mean, that yeah. that's what? something that was already, Something yes. that can happen. But but most people don't take advantage right. of that because they don't know that they could do that. If you have it already separated out, then it's a different story. I'm not saying that I would that I advocate keeping the system the way it is because I'm nervous about it not being passed. But that definitely has been an argument in the past that it would pass in one town and not the other, and then what happens? Well, right. and I think, your, and I think, think that, that risk. Uh, that meeting. And I think that's you know, how we and I think that's how we got to this item right. in the agreement because of that reason. But I think there's enough other reasons to go to change it to go back. Yep. Um okay. I John did you, John I, I think John wanted to speak too, and so okay. doesn't Judith. Okay. Go ahead, well, John. You know, the, the dilemma by one town passing a budget and the other not approving the budget item line item. As Denise said, it could be called out. It could be called out separately anyway, um, and that has happened um, mm -hmm. on other items in our select board budget over the years. Uh, in terms of calling separating it out so that we can adjust that, mm -hmm. um, and and yes, in what it could what could happen is it could be voted down in its entirety. It could be amended on the floor, mm -hmm. as can any line item in our select board budget regardless in callous mm -hmm. so this doesn't change that um mm -hmm. process really it um it, it adds to transparency it improves our democracy as a result um and if this thing were voted down or the budget line item was reduced to the point where we couldn't operate the east Montpelier fire department that we we could just call another special town meeting in callous to uh, right, you know, have vote on it again. It's not a big deal. Um, the budget doesn't kick in till July one, so we got a number of months, three, four months to to get that resolved. It's yeah. Uh, I just just one thing, just to add on to, and again, uh, um, this is very helpful to appreciate what the um, motivation or thinking of the town of Callis is. Um, but as I read the document, I mean, the purpose of the document is to recognize the allocation of responsibility and costs of, both, of, of the town, of the two towns. Um, and if, you know, that paragraph, paragraph six, 
acknowledges that we're both making a commitment to present our, um, you know, what we're going to ask our town regarding the allocation of the budget, what we're going to present to the citizenry to say yay or nay. But we're making that commitment to each other. And yes, each of our individual towns right now can say nay, but we're entering to, into this collective agreement that we've, we've allocated cost sharing and we're going to present to our respective towns that amount of cost allocation, asking them to approve it or not approve it. If we take out the first two sentences of paragraph six, we're removing that commitment to each other. And you know, where, where else do we memorialize that cost allocation commitment and the commitment to ask our respective towns to approve that? The commitment to the allocation is in item number, um, where it says the one, one third, two thirds. Yeah, that's the, a different the agreement. cost allocation. Just looking but, for it in here. I had it no, a minute. But, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I hear what you're saying, Judith, and I appreciate what you're saying. It's item 10. 10. It's in item 10, Denise. Yeah, okay. It's, yeah, it is. It's number 10, Judith, in the document. That's the, that's the formula, but she's not really talking about the formula. Well, it, about it, the it, commitment. if the yeah. formula is one third, two thirds, then that's the commitment. You know, Judith, I, I would add to that, you know, there is, you know, the reality in town politics like that, there, there is no guarantee. And so you have to say, you know, what we're doing is trying to put this litmus where I, we have a lot of trust in the taxpayers in Dallas, and this is a great service, like I said, right? This is something that people directly benefit from. So, you know, by really engaging them, it, it diffuses, you know, resistance. And they will also bring good questions. They're going to ask, why is this, you know, why are these things rising this much? We, at, we answer that question with real information. And that kind of helps hold that support. The second you start doing, we kind of working, we start working away from them and just bypassing them. Any naysayer is, you're giving them ammunition because they point, look at this, they're hiding this. So that we can't make a decision, and in fact, and then they, it what it does is it kicks that down the road a little bit, because they start putting the heat on the select boards at that point, and saying, you know, we're not going to allow this, as the taxpayers. So, you know, this is really, you know, to me, this is, it's about the democracy. It's about really being open, keeping the people engaged in it, you know. So, the, and though that I have a lot of trust that they will support this, you know. So. I don't think I don't think that that agreement is all that ironclad. You know, if the people get angry and feel like they're being, if we're working behind their backs, let me, they're going to find a way to undermine us. That's why it's better just to keep them right in the room. And so, and that's my own opinion and my own experience, certainly, in watching board decisions in Calus. I've lived here twenty years, and you know, I'm. <laughs> And I've worked with a lot of other towns too. And I'm seeing how these things go south on you. You know, if you, I mean, I think this is open. It's, you know, we're, it's full disclosure. And I think, I mean, I think we're always better if we do this. Cliff, did, Cliff, did you want to say anything? What's that? I was asking, I was asking our other board member, Cliff, if you wanted to say anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would suggest, I, I, I appreciate um, where you're coming from with that, uh, Judith. Uh, but I would tend to agree with Rick that, uh, you know, we, we operate as transparently as possible. That's how we're going to achieve the greatest results in our respective communities. And I would uh, suggest that it is the contract as a whole that both towns sign into is what represents the commitment. And it also says, and it also it also says further in our revised language that the cost the cost share allocation methodology is set out in a separate agreement. So that's the commitment for 
the cost share, in addition to item 10 in the con in the other contract, in the other right. agreement. All right, so do we have any more thoughts from the East Montpelier Select Board? How about John? We heard from Judith. John, we haven't heard from you. No, I guess that I, I mean, I guess you have to say that no, no agreement is ironclad. Um, my concern is that um, it ends up getting voted down by, I don't know how many people you have to go to town meeting, but we vote, we vote Australia ballot because we feel that, that uh, it gives an opportunity for more people to actually choose to vote and opportunity to vote on, on a particular item. If you vote for it from the floor in East Montpelier, you have 180 people vote for it, or maybe not even that. If you vote for it by Australian ballot, how many do we have when, when we vote Australian ballot? We have we have a thousand when we had the mail in. Right. <coughs> so I, I just I I I think doing it the way we do it is appropriate, and and everybody has an opportunity to weigh in on it. I I know nothing's perfect, but it does kind of leave East Montpelier hanging out there a little bit when we don't know if uh, if Callis is going to pass pass it or agree to to participate in that funding. But it could yeah, work the John, other way around. It could work the other way around sure. too. If you separate this it doesn't out. change that, John. John, this does not change yeah. that one iota. This just makes make sure that we have a conversation. And if the folks in Callis were to vote it down after this, I would hope the East Montpelier Callis Fire Department shows up and they can't explain or justify the budget and they vote that down. I don't think it's us leaving you hanging. I think that's the normal course of events. We happen to be co-parties to an agreement uh, uh, and we're not going to change our whole system to Australian ballot over this contract item but that seems to be I don't think I'm asking you to I think I was just explaining where I was coming from John not telling you what to do but but John if you separated the fire department out we we would still vote by Australian ballot on that item it just I understand what they're that. saying is it makes it more clear to the voters, what they're voting on. I understand. I mean, this that. is the argument the citizens have brought forth to me when they stopped by my farm and talked about it. Is we would like to vote on it, just like Kellogg Hubbard Library, as a separate item. That's what we're talking about. Wait. So, 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 so right now in East Montpelier, you have Australian ballot on, and this is incorporated within your overall select board budget. That's correct. And so they just vote on your select board budget. Exactly. And there's, they can have a they can have a debate on the floor, but they right. can't change that budget anywhere. They can't change the budget for snow tires. They can't change the budget for, you know, hours of overtime. They can't do anything. So they can discuss. That's your it, approach, and that's fine. You're right. They can discuss it, and I don't know to what end. I mean, I guess they have to vote the whole budget up or down. That's not how we do it. You're a larger town. You might, you probably have your reasons for that. Um, you know, well, small towns usually go this path. It's how it we, was. We want to have more time. participation. And in a democracy, a vote is important. So if we only have 160 people at a town meeting, that's who's participating in the process. If you mail votes, if you mail ballots to them, you have a thousand people participating with their votes. Right, I understand that. And that, that's the same argument for getting rid of town meeting too, by the way. Right, that people yeah, and uh, that I've always happen. advocated for town meeting, but I certainly am seeing why people do advocate for Australian ballot because yep. you have more participation. And we have our largest budget item, two, three quarters of our budget um, is our school budget, as is everybody's. And we yep. do that by Australian ballot. And that yep. was decided by our electorate. And that was decided, decided by, was by decided one or two by, votes. That was decided by our electorate, not by a contract uh -huh. that binds the select board. Now, if, if our electorate so chooses to do Australian ballot for or incorporate forces into being a component of the select board budget, that, that would be fine with me. But uh, right now, um, for our, for five, people in our town to decide for everybody and bind our people procedurally um, 
in a legal contract. I, I just don't think that's appropriate. Um, I mean, that's my perspective, and I I do understand your perspective. So 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 anyway, separating so that's another discussion really. Yeah, what we're talking yeah. about right now is separating the emergency service budget away from the select board budget. And we could still choose to do how we do it. If we have the option under right. this language to do it the other way, separating it. And you folks also would have the option. So that's what we're talking about. Right. 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 I think right. we I think we kind of lost track of what we're right. saying. Either either town could choose to continue to do it the way we're, we've been yeah, doing it yeah, no or we could or we could choose to do it differently and it's at the option of each different town's yeah. select board understood and the only argument i've ever heard against it is what if one person one town votes it down and the other one doesn't so that's and, the, that's that's the only argument i've ever heard well, right yeah, and that just, and that and right now that could still happen the, the way even with the, uh, the previous language it could still happen yeah now, this is the way that guarantees that people are most likely they're more engaged they're talking about it and you know i think this is the safer path in the in the end run and i think it actually does generate even more support because there will be always some naysayers and but people still know this is well, they know this is an expensive service it's not for profit and we're doing it's and it's but it's a service of real value so you know i always have almost no doubt they'll support it but i think and I, I actually like giving the fire departments an opportunity to yeah. stand up and speak and say this is what we're doing and these are the mm -hmm. problems that we've encountered and this is why we need a new truck and i think it i think it just leads to discussion and putting a face with the money yeah okay so difference. I think that we fully understand Callis's position on this item, and, but I think that um, for East Montpelier to move forward with it, I think we're going to have to put it on, on our agenda as an item that we would discuss among ourselves. We have one board member not here. I think hmm. that he would appreciate the discussion. So I think we're going to have to put this on our agenda on our next meeting. And then we need to, um, you know, establish a position on this change of language and then move forward with a meeting with the fire department emergency services Can I, seth there's one more thing in that contract too i think uh you know we discussed it at the board you know right now we've we have one signed contract and it's an auto renewal we'd actually yeah, i like, saw that right we'd like to do you know i've hardly ever been in contracts where we don't after you know, for, for instance, at the state, Judith will know that I manage a lot of contracts there. We, we have original contracts for two years, and then we've got two one-year options to extend. It never extends beyond four years. And the reason you do this is so, it, it, you know, you're constantly kind of just going back and double-checking everything, making sure everything's up to date. And also for us, there's enough, there's enough transients on the board, so you get new board members by having yeah. the discipline of visiting, people are really familiar with it. It doesn't go beyond kind of the historic knowledge. So, I mean, I, I think that's a minor point and it, the contracts would likely just, it would become pretty mechanical to, but it would impose that discipline that we just look at it. But if we're, I don't know, put it whatever it would be, a four year period or something. Well, we're, we're asking, we asked Rick for, the automatic renewal process to be no more than three years because I think it was a really good exercise for yeah. the Callis Select Board to sit down and look at the documents and see if there was any issues we other issues we might notice and we didn't but I think it's I think we do our due diligence for our residents and taxpayers to periodically review documents and not just mm -hmm. have them automatically re renew for however long. Right, it's, okay. a, it's educational for us too. Yeah. For the new no, that's fair enough. And as you said, you know, the select boards change members a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's good to get up to speed on these type of contracts. And if you don't have the audit, if you take away some of the automatic renewal process, it is a good time to renew the, con uh, to review the contract. 
So those are the two items I believe that you've um, brought brought up. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I think that we just need to discuss this at our own meeting and then, then we'll schedule a meeting with the fire department. I think that's the discussion. I think that's where we need to head on this. Well, I, I hey, Seth, so I, I think we as partners in this mm -hmm. would, would like to hear what East Montpelier's position is on the two language changes before right. you meet with the fire department. Right, before I oh, would ask, I was in mean, the oh, no, We definitely would reach out to you. We, we just okay. don't have a position right now. Yeah. Um, and I yeah, think that we fair. need to discuss that and then we'll we'll reach out to you right. and then see, go from there. And do you want us, right. and, do you want and us so to end on that conversation with the fire department? Just well, what we're saying is it's two step, Rick. Yeah. That East my player is going to talk about it amongst themselves. Then they'll right. get, back to us, get back to us. Yep. And we'll discuss it again as the two boards. And then we'll invite the fire department. I got exactly. You. Okay, that's and, and of course, yeah. Of course, East Montpelier can amend the language so that, so that it remains status quo on your end. And we would just you know, see the changes with our share of the contract. I mean, that, that's, it's not all or nothing is what I'm suggesting. Well, you're saying that the option will now be there. Right. right. And, and you could choose either way. And it's the same right, with us. But if you Right. If you if you're saying you don't even want that option, you don't need it for some of the reasons I've already heard, um, then you don't need then you can amend it to say that with regard to callous. Right. Following That's true. Process. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, we could do that. So there, there's a yes. menu there. Good yeah. point. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's how we need to proceed forward. Um, yeah, so we'll you'll You'll keep us posted on yeah. when you're ready. Well, we'll, we're going to put it on our next meeting. I think okay. we have room, Bruce. We'll find it. We'll find it. Yeah. So that's that meeting is going to be June uh, 21st, maybe. Yes. And then we'll discuss it, come up with some lang language, whatever, get a hold of you, and schedule a meeting with the fire department. So, Seth, before you close this out, you might also want to ask about the third item that they requested, the Which is what? shift to 60 days from five months. Oh, I thought that was the second one. Oh, you're saying- well it's, well, it's part of the renewal process to change it from, what is it, five months right now to 60 days, because five months out means you're, you're trying to remember to do this when you're also getting everything ready for town meeting and budgets and- yeah, but this five months gives you time to amend it. Or 60 well, days doesn't give you much time to- Yeah, well, amend. you can send us back a different option. Okay. Could you, um, just to clarify, um, could you provide us with the sections we're referring to just so that we're clear on, you know, what date provisions, just so that we're all literally on the same page regarding the modifications that you wanna make. Um, I think the paragraph six is clear, but the other two, um, it'd be helpful if you, you know, just maybe did a strike through or something or, you know, compare the existing to your proposed. That would be helpful. Okay, I can do that and get it to Bruce to distribute. Yeah. And Katie, you'll make a note so I don't forget. Okay. All right. Is there... Did you have another question, Bruce? All right. All right, Callis, so I, I think we're done. You guys are, yeah, would thanks. anybody like to make a motion to adjourn Callis so Select moved. Board? Yeah, so moved. Second? Second. Second. All right, we got to take a vote. I'm <laughs> an I. I'm an I. Rick? I. I. Um, John? Yes. And Cliff? Aye. All right, thank you so much, you smart player. Thanks. Have a thank good you. night. Thank you. thank you, Callis. Bye bye. Have a nice evening. You too. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So the next item that we have would be F. A little early, but I don't think we're expecting people to tune in to talk about our discussion on town management in light of COVID-19, unless Zach does. I don't know. He hasn't early. said anything about coming back for that. Okay. 
I, didn't, I haven't heard from him either. Okay, so um, is there any change though? Because we haven't heard from the governor. We haven't gotten the 80% yet. Very close though, right? Yeah, 77 <clears throat> or something. 79 point something. We're almost yeah, there. I mean, it's probably imminent, I would guess. Yeah. So what I was hoping you would think about tonight was being more specific than last time. <laughs> about town management? Look at the yeah. meeting memo, just so you yeah. get a sense of what I'm hoping you'll think about. Yeah. One question I had, Bruce, um, that, you know, we're proposing following the, you know, what is it, stage four or whatever, phase four, where the universal guidance is recommended, but we're imposing it, it seems, under our plan. And, you know, that's something to think about if that's something, you know, we want to do or, or not. Uh, that's, that's the only difference. Yeah. I had thought that, you know, if we're following phase four, um, there'd be no requirement for masking or social distancing, yeah, but this proposal does have the masking and social distancing, which, you know, may be fine. I'm just, you know, you're right. It's something for us to talk about in greater detail. <clears throat> so there, I put in two things in this for that exact reason, that one, yeah. and then the one down below uh that says the town office remains off limits for for uh, committee meetings for the time being until things settle back down and that's because you're that's because the office is so small it can't guarantee the right separation right is that what you're saying you, you can't really guarantee anything that's what i'm saying i mean we yeah. opened up in hardwick we op we i i actually said if you're vaccinated and, and you've waited the two weeks, you don't have to wear a mask. If you're not vaccinated, you wear a mask. And we're back to normal. But, but you just said that to the personnel that works in the office. I said it right, it's right on the door, anybody coming in. I don't have to ask them, I don't care. It's up to them to wear a mask if they're not vaccinated. Yeah. So I might be in jail tomorrow, but <laughs> everybody was pretty happy about it, trust me on that one. And we had a live meeting on uh, Thursday. You're right in our but we have a huge meeting room so we right. were how many people were at the meeting john well i, I would say uh, not a lot probably 15 people that's a lot actually i mean that's but we're spread but we we have a huge meeting room we have two of them and we actually took the, we actually used a big one now and it's got like 18 foot ceilings you know it's really tall ceilings and everything it's vaulted ceilings so huh. we had a fan on you know, we have a ceiling fans we're operating and everything and nobody's, it, it hasn't been an issue at all. Right. It could be, <laughs> it could be, but. I kind of like that approach, but <laughs> put a sign on the door. I haven't gotten in trouble yet, so I'll wait. <laughs> yeah. They say that's not legal, but I don't know. Right. No, it it is legal if you so choose. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's I feel it's not our responsibility open. to ask. We're not going to ask people if they've had a vaccination, and there's majority of people coming in there are all vaccinated, and yeah. and, and but and everybody was wearing masks. And the minute I just said to people, I said, "Look, you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated, properly right. vaccinated." I like and, you that. know they just go, oh, "Thank you, Thank God." <laughs> Bruce, yeah. Bruce, I'm wondering, um, do you know how um, the staff feels, how Rosie feels about this? You know so what the, your thoughts are. That, that's basically the reason I wrote it up the way I did. Um, this plays a little bit into the, the uh, personnel issue we'll have in a minute. Uh, okay. But um, there is a degree of concern to opening up this building to free flow because <laughs> I, when it is open, you end up with, if you know where I sit, you end up with dogs in here and people all over the place. And I'm not 100% sure that the staff is quite ready for that. This is mm -hmm. sort of a, a slower approach. And because this summer is going to be a little bit weird for uh, some of the personnel, it would give them a little more time to adjust to things. 
uh, and our situation is different. We we still have like in the town clerk's office, we have plexiglass windows that are that are up, and they may be up for a long time. And and so so the 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 town the town clerk essentially separated from from the customers to a great extent. They didn't have a separate yeah. room for the lawyers to come in and do title searches and everything. Hmm. If they want to wear their masks, they're and Sorry. East Montpelier isn't as far ahead as the rest of Vermont. You know, we're not quite at 70%. You know, we were, like, over the weekend, we were still around 50-something. So, um, and I do, you know, I do appreciate the concerns of, you know, folks who actually have to work there. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, all our folks were vaccinated. Well, is everyone vaccinated that works in the office now, Bruce? Um, this is still, Orca is still here. Uh, so I'll just say. I wouldn't answer that. Yeah, Bruce. yeah, <laughs> I am agree with that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it looks like there's questions in your select board report about remote meetings. Well, that's actually something you haven't talked a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. And again, this room that you're in right now is so wacky. Even contemplating hybrid meetings using that room uh, oh. is troublesome. <laughs> we talked about the fire department, right? We have talked about the fire department. They have not yet agreed to open up the public room. Uh, but that is that last uh, line in that order, that proposed order there, pretty much points directly at that that particular spot. When that opens up, that will be a lot easier to utilize for any number of things. So the hybrid meeting approach, you we could implement in the fire department meeting room. Oh. I don't know that any of us know how to do the hybrid very well. I mean, you would I have to have an investment in equipment, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, people and, have... and then people that would want to use it. I mean, people that, oh, yeah, okay, it'll just take me five minutes to go set that up. I mean, one of the advantages of having Zach Sullivan as the planning commission chair is that he is doing this in real life so that he can bring what he knows to our area and he wants to meet in person i think he would be a good one the planning commission would be a good one to send off to the fire department see if they can pull off a hybrid meeting over there and then work off of what they figure out is he planning to get the equipment he actually has some of it already oh He's got one of those uh, cameras that does the wide angle thing yep. uh, already set up for this kind of use. What he doesn't have is the, the microphone, uh, those multi angled microphones. Yep. And I think we're all trying to figure out if we do hybrid, are we talking hybrid with a Zoom component or are we talking hybrid with kind of a conference call component? So well, that's the one is a video, and the other is the conference call. Well, one is an interactive video. Mm -hmm. uh, if you did the conference call and maybe had, uh, you know, a, either Orca doing uh, uh, their uh, live, which you'd have to pay for, but a, a live stream or a Facebook live stream or something like that where it's not interactive, mm -hmm. uh, it's a little different than trying to maintain this Zoom interactive approach that we may have more struggles with in an in-person meeting, combining it with an in-person meeting. We have Hardwick Community TV that does ours. But, but the, fire right? the fire department doesn't have the equipment themselves. No. Even though they have no. fancy rooms, but not the equipment. They would have the ability to um, project Sure. Let, let's say uh, you did a, a live stream. You could 
project that onto the screen so you could see what everybody else is seeing. And if you wanted to do a Zoom, you could do it that way and aim the desk at that screen rather than have the hand of the meeting up, up top. Uh, there's just more room to play. I think we're going to have to think about having meetings over there for a little while at this transition time and perhaps doing a Zoom component or Orca or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we're going to have to do that. If we want to do, you know, live meetings, they're going to be, have to be a hybrid. That's what it looks like to me for a while. Is that a fair assumption? You could probably do a Zoom a Zoom meeting and just put a camera on one of your on your laptop. Um, I, I'm able to do that when I do presentations. I have a, a camera that that shows my hand. You know, when I'm if I'm drawing something on the whiteboard, it's no different than than just having like a web webcam. Couldn't you do it that way? We wouldn't be able to see the people, but they could talk with us on the phone if we wanted to. Yeah, well, we've had Carl in our meetings before several times where he wasn't here and he wanted to zoom yeah. in. And it, I mean, it's odd, but it's how many people are going to be doing that? That's a right. conference call. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. But we're but talking you know, about recorded. having, we're like talking about having video recorded. interactive Zoom meetings. I, I don't know. I don't know that you, I mean, okay. I don't know how much longer we're going to have to do this anyway. And how many people would actually need to participate in the way you're suggesting, the difficult way. I, right. I'm not thinking right. anybody's going to participate, but I can't really say that. Yeah, no, I know. I know. You have to I, assume, I, you I have think to keep it we, open in case. But I think we have to have an option. If we don't have to invest a lot of money into, into yes. the option, I think we should probably present it. Just so what's wrong with just doing the, the kind of conference approach? I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that either. But Me either. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't invest in a bunch of AV equipment and no. things and right. stuff. But, I mean, whatever, we're a small town. Right. Yeah, I know, but the perception still needs to be that we're open to sure. remote, remote attendance. But that it is that still open to remote attendance. I mean, if anybody wanted to call in, we could arrange it so yeah. that they can call in. And it's not ideal, but this isn't ideal either. I mean, this is weird too. So. Yeah, but but what about doing meetings at the fire department? There's more space there. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Look people would feel more comfortable actually coming to the meeting there, and we'll get right. as many people as we ever did coming to the select board meetings if it were at the fire yeah. department. Yeah. <laughs> Two people, three maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no. One. So, so what's the conclusion here at this for this item? Uh, I don't know that we have one. <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to flesh that out. Okay. The conclusion is, is is a ten day, ten days to get this in order still going to happen, or are we saying that the personnel that work in the office are not going to be comfortable with people coming in? Is that what I'm getting out of this? It, no, that's not what you're getting from what I was trying to put together. What we're looking at is more of a we're having two different discussions. Separate yeah. the meeting stuff from the office stuff, if you can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, having full flow through the office again, I don't think we're ready for. Okay. And as I said, it's because we're so tight. Yeah. When I mean, when people have freedom, they go everywhere, and I'm yeah. not sure everybody's ready for that. Okay. Uh, no, let's by, not do that. By creating the limited access, we've got that vestibule set up with the screen and all the rest so people come there if Denise isn't right there they ring a bell somebody comes yeah. up uh, the front door is unlocked so that's right now it is uh, so that's worked well since we had the last tax installment period uh, it's the free flow that people are still a little concerned about okay Okay, so it sounds like that's we're not going to open up the office for a while. Just to get that that part of the discussion cleared up, we're not going to open up the office. Is that correct? I don't know that that's what he said. What's that? Um, I think he's, it's, um, 
I mean, it, it's allowing the folks in kind of on a, you know, yeah. beyond the vestibule, like kind of on a appointment um, basis. A, <laughs> not even well, that's the way it's been. You know, yeah. On call or something. I don't know. That's the way it's been. It's been by appointment. But now, it, I mean, the way it's been working is like for these easements that I had to get for those two culvert projects, people are doing the notaries inside the building now instead of outside, which is the way it was handled for the last year. Uh, yeah. So that part has changed. Uh, as I said, once we started taking the tax installments again inside, we just never took that little area down again. And that's where people come in now. Uh, well, it sounds like we're going to have to change the um, decision that we made last meeting. You're fleshing it out. Well, we're going to be more specific. That's what I was saying, is that the yes. motion you made last week was great, except two weeks ago, except it didn't give many details. Now we're trying to get the details in. Yeah. So the, the details would be, we're not going to change the town office um, opening, reopening, closure, whatever. It's just what, the meeting component. We actually are forward. changing the town office because your order says the town office is closed. Yes. Now we're saying it's open. To meetings. Just with, no, it's open. Okay. Just with limited access. Okay. It may be a subtle difference, but it's it changes the the stop sign to a, a more of a yellow. Okay. So it sounds like we're going to have to change the language in what we put together last time, because it says to open the town office to the public. You you can't. You're going to have to change that. No, you're opening it to the public on a limited access basis. Okay, okay. I, I wrote it all out, Seth. You got to look at it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm looking at that, and then we'll go over here. So you're saying, okay, as amended, and that's the motion that you want us to make. No, I want you to play with this format, because that's the format we set up when we did the original order. Yes. I like the way it's written now, I think. It's exactly what we've been talking about. So you're going to unlock the front door? Right. OK. And it's off limits to town committee and commissions because there's just too many of there, there's too many people on some of those commissions. And committees. I'm trying to figure out how to make it you know 10 people can come in but not 20 it's a public meeting you're not supposed to set limits right i'm not sure how you'd phrase that effectively right yeah yeah and yeah, nobody... my only What's that? Sorry. my only suggestion is looking at your language um bruce in the paragraph before we get to the you know the bullet to the arrows um, guide, uh, you know, the last sentence, by the following order designed to guide municipal operations toward full normalcy. <laughs> I don't know what full normalcy is, but I don't know. I don't think anyone's saying we're ever going back to normal because, you know, maybe, you know, towards full operation or towards, you know. I didn't want to use the word operation twice, so I didn't like that <laughs> one either. Sorry. If you've got better language, please have at it. <laughs> That, that full normalcy is actually used quite often in discussing this thing all the time. They use it constantly, but we can change that. Doesn't mean we have to. <laughs> no, doesn't mean we have to. I would just say uh, designed to guide municipal operations moving forward. Yeah. Sure. It's a transitionary <laughs> document. Right. This is going to change again. <laughs> I'm not that comfortable with the second next to last bullet, but the town office building remain off limits for town committee commission board meetings and public events. But we're saying we cannot have meetings here because you can't screen the public as far as masking. Remember, this is a temporary thing. 
Yeah. We're trying to go from whatever, whenever this, this phase four happens yeah. mm -hmm. for the next couple months to see how it plays. Yeah. yeah. Th this isn't for the next year. No. At least I hope not. And that's, this is leading up to um, some of the questions down below uh, yeah. for select board. Yeah. You have a meeting, one more meeting in June and then one meeting in July. Do you right. want to stay the status quo for those two meetings and then look at in person in August or do you want to speed it up? Uh, these are the specifics I was talking about wanting to get out there. Um, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Honestly, it seems like it might be easier not to speed it up. Just, yeah. and I would love to meet in person and blah, 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 blah. But it seems like just there is yeah. some hesitancy and that's fine. I mean, we're, yeah. yeah, we're doing all right as we are. It's not are. the best, yeah. but we're doing fine. I, I don't see any reason to speed it up. And we can adopt this transitionary motion, so to speak, and keeps everyone happy and feeling protected. And then on the meeting aspect of things, we can look into having a meeting in the fire department. But at that point, we're also going to have to look at these remote attendance options, et cetera. Yep. So I'd say we should adopt the motion that Bruce has come up with because it gives specific guidance and then go from there. So moved. Yeah. We yeah. have a second? With the, uh, just with the slight revisions that John On the uh, full normacy. Yeah. Go to, okay. <laughs> what, was the, what was the language on that? Full abnormalcy. <laughs> Operations no. moving forward. <laughs> moving forward. Oh boy, that's sophisticated language. Forward. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. So we have a second from Judith. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Um, okay, so we're going to kick the ball down the road on the three bullets at the end of this motion, which is the remote attendance options, et cetera, I guess. At, at the very least, you should be thinking about them because we're going to have to yeah. figure out what to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sounds good. Um, oh, here's the agenda. <clears throat> okay. So the next thing is a personnel matter. So we need to go in executive session on that. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, so that means someone makes a motion to go in executive session. Yeah. Amy is making the motion. Do we have a second on that? John is making the second. All those in favor of going in executive session to discuss this personnel matter, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. They do appear to have it. They do have it. So that means there's a couple. Yeah. What happened to Orca? Yeah, I don't Orca. know why Orca is still showing. And Rose is still showing too. Yeah. Um, here. Huh. Oh, they this are here. meeting is yes. being recorded. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, when we end the meeting, they won't be. <laughs> so where are we? We're in that. Um, other business, but we also have the select board report. Everything else has been done. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So the select board report has a few things that we still haven't discussed, um, so the, which comes yeah. down to Jeff Byers' report, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Isn't that correct, Bruce? Well, that's, I mean, Jeff emailed me last week and said, you know, he had meant to reach out earlier. You'd forgotten. Uh, he'd like to do what we had talked about to review what had happened last winter and see mm -hmm. what the long-term plan might be, if any. Yep. Uh, 
and then Carl left, so I haven't been able to ask him about it. But Carl will be here for the next meeting. Right, correct. So let's do that. So the real question would be whether it's next meeting or the July meeting, simply because next meeting is that wacky meeting, uh, the end of the year meeting. Oh. Uh, that can, it goes yeah, a lot faster on Zoom than it used to in person, but we may want to wait till the July meeting. Sure, sounds good. Okay. I will not be at the next meeting, incidentally. Oh, you're not going to be? No, I would love to be, but I am flying in and I won't be home until like 10, so. Oh, 10 that night or 10 the night before? <laughs> 10 that night. <laughs> 10 the night before, and I'm just going to walk really slow home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can always zoom in, you know. She's not going to. I know she's not going to. Okay. Zoom in so, from the plane? I don't know. Right. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Okay. So, what about the V trans? So the the county road project seems to be on track. Uh, we got notice of a structures grant for that north of Barnes Culvert. Um, it'll be a small grant. I told you that I had asked our handler, Shauna Clifford, if there was any money in that structures program. And she said there was a little leftover and she'd see if she could fit something in and she has, but I don't know how much it's for. Yeah. Uh, so every penny is good, so whatever. Um, yeah. The wetlands permit applications are in for both projects, both culvert pro projects. We're in that review period, and then there'll be the 30-day notice period and all the rest. So the earliest this is likely to start is um, end of July, early August, but everybody's on board. So all going well. The uh, uh, Emerald Ash Borer Ash Tree Management Project going on in County Road is done. Mm -hmm. uh, that went well, actually, really well. Uh, a lot faster than the first round we did. And people seem happy with the end results. Good. And that's pretty much it. Looks good. Huh. Any questions from the rest of the members that are here? About anything? So we're not going to have meetings in person for a couple more months. Oh, well. I don't mind the Zoom meetings that much. No, they're over quick, so. The, the timing is good. They, they are quicker, but there is something, I mean, just about retention and, you know, kind of. Yeah, I don't have any problem with the retention part of it, but. You don't? I do. Like, just on computers. I just, I don't, there's something that just doesn't. Doesn't click. In my head as much. Yeah, it does seem too quick in some ways, but yeah, but that's okay. Mm. Quick is good in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so I look forward to seeing you all in person. I think I'm supposed to say that, but um, and you want to make any nice, exceptions so, to that so amy you're not at the next meeting is that what you said i'm not going to be at the next meeting no you're going away i'm going away i'm going to go and visit my grandson oh where's that washington dc oh okay sounds good um well we'll see you in july yeah we'll get Car we're gonna get there. we're gonna get carl back and trade Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my Midwestern brother will be here in my stead. That's right. <laughs> uh, okay, so on the fire department stuff, do you have any strong feelings, Amy, either way? Because you won't be here, so I'll just ask you. Strong feelings. I mean, I actually don't really know why they couldn't have just, I, why they couldn't have just said what their thinking was, because it wasn't really that dramatic, was it now? <laughs> oh really 
Honestly, but I mean, that it was... takes them a long time to get around to what they want to say. Yeah, I guess. Okay. I mean, that was, so, I was expecting something really interesting and I, you know, right. wanted to take a nap. So, um, <laughs> no, I don't have any strong feelings either way. Okay. Um, I mean, there isn't really much to have strong feelings about. It's kind of what they're doing. So, yeah. And there's nothing for us to worry about. We're just going to, yeah. they're either going to vote it up or vote it down. Yeah, exactly. Cases, they're going to vote it up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's good that we know what your position is, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay. Very I'm strong. Good. Yeah. I can yeah. paraphrase you. I can paraphrase you pretty easily. Good. Okay. <laughs> and we also have the recording to look back on. That's right. So just in case okay. you need to go back. And... Oh, that's right. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think this whole, I yeah. think this whole contracting, you know, the way we've got this set up is kind of crazy anyway. It doesn't give us any assurances that um, Callis will stay involved in this. If they have a change of leadership or something happens, they can just, they can back out of it. And the only reason I'm saying this is because we had to say, we just had this happen Greensboro backed out of a police contract. They've been with the town of Hardwick since probably the 80s. Really? And they got a couple of different people on the select board and they decided they didn't like the way the contract was. And I don't know what happened on, on Hardwick's side. They they got they didn't get along and they backed out. And now they now Hardwick has a $250,000 hole in their budget. Hmm. So what did Greensboro do to do that? They went to the sheriff's business? department. Okay. Uh, or Orleans Sheriff's Department is, is providing them with coverage. Um, not the same level of coverage, obviously. They're just going to drive right. some town on each shift where we, you know, where Hardwick was there, you know, on a regular basis. I guess I just wonder if that would, if that could be an eventuality, is that, and I mentioned that before, if they would just say, nope, we're just going to do it by service with Woodbury or something. I mean, is it, is it possible that they would just not, like, nope, we're out of this, this contract altogether? Is that at all possible? They, they wouldn't well, be able to do I it for ambulance service. Yeah. Okay. They wouldn't. And Barrytown would never hook on with them without having us or Marshfield and Plainfield because there's no direct connection. Right. Uh, so they're they kind have to of go with Hardwick. Isolated. Yeah. Hardwick Rescue. They'd have to go with. Right. Well, they have uh, ownership in the building. Which I don't see them backing out of, but I really don't see them backing out of that. No, and I and it's kind of I was kind of kind of concerned that this was they were so wishy washy they were driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my frustration level was right up there. Yeah, I I know those guys anyway. I worked with Brave Man for a long time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so anyway, it is what it is. I don't see them going anywhere, but who knows? Right. Who knows? In, in my, I mean, you guys kind of wanted to get out of it anyway and just say, exactly. Okay, so well, I'm not I thinking mean, that it's a big deal. If they, okay. if they decide tomorrow, oh, see you later. I'm like, whew. Well, the thing was, was that this was a really, I would think that it was, I mean, the cash was nice and the budgeting was nice. You know, if we have to sit around and wait for budgeting until, I, I don't know, but Whatever. Uh, that's in the my part world. That they, it would be easier if they went bye bye. Yeah. You sent well, them a bill. It's not the end of the world. You're right. Exactly. So who cares? No, I know. If they I stay with us. That. Okay. We yeah. will deal with them. If well, they decide to go down the road, then good. Good enough. <laughs> what Amy's saying, though, is the one thing that they've always forgotten by opening up their budgets, if they get changed to half of it, what happens then? It's kind of like what Judith was saying earlier. This is sort of almost a trust thing. Yeah. All these agreements work together. And to pick out one little element of one clause is not terribly productive. No. But I will say this much. Denise Wheeler does not want me talking in those joint meetings. And you shouldn't, Seth. You shouldn't point <laughs> to me to say something. <laughs> she does not want me talking. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> for better or for worse you do okay. have a right to talk well but i'm not a select board member and she no that's what the point she was making yeah it pointedly yes yeah she's done it before. a board member she knew full well he wasn't but maybe she forgot 
Give her the benefit no, of the doubt. They did not forget. <laughs> However, I thought when there was I a wrote census these question on the last I was meeting. a board member. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You were. So um, are we done with the blah blah? Exactly. Yeah. Hey, this is where I come into it. Okay. Um, I'd make a motion that we adjourn. <laughs> and second. do we have a second? Second. Judith. <laughs> Yay, Judith. All of them in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> Enjoy your visit with your grandson. Thank you. Grandchild. I'll see you all in, thank you. I'll yeah. see you all in July. Have, have, have a, a nice fun, time. safe trip. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.